RodneyABrooks.com video interviews. Today we're talking to Eric Bailey, who's founder and president of Bailey Wealth Advisors in Silver Spring, Maryland. Welcome, Eric. Uh, good to be here, Rodney. Good to see you as always. Uh, I'm sure this is going to be enlightening for the audience. So uh, thanks for having me. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. So, I, you know, the first thing I want to talk to you about is 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 different saving strategies because, um, you know, some people, you know, were um, savings and investment. That's what we want to talk about because you should have different investment strategies depending on how old you are. So, so how how should you invest in in your void in your forties versus your fifties versus the sixties? Well, uh, I always use an analogy of uh, timelines. Really drives your should drive your decision uh, for investment, and the analogy is almost like growing plants. I mean, if you're a gardener, you put something in the ground, you know that uh, if you've got the right soil and you're doing the right things, over time, you're going to get a good crop. Investing is similar. Uh, of course, you can't uh, uh, plant uh, corn in July and think you're going to have a harvest in August. So to your point, uh, in your 40s, you should be looking at longer term investments. And that basically equates to aligning your capital with your objective. So if your objective is 20, 25 years out, you're going to have time to be more uh, aggressive, I should say. Meaning you can uh, look at things like uh, small caps, emerging markets, different investments that generally have more volatility, but have proven over time to produce higher returns. So I would say in your 40s, uh, assuming everyone's starting with the same dollar amount. Uh, you certainly would want to uh, have a, a more uh, equities-based portfolio. Uh, so in your 40s, you could probably be 80% equities, 20% uh, fixed income. Uh, and that will give you the kind of growth you need. Now, you're going to have some volatility, but if you stay the course, history has pro proven that uh, you're going to come out way ahead as if as opposed to if you were more conservative when you get to your 50s generally you're going to see a change and you're probably going to be more 65 percent equities 35 percent fixed income uh, you want to reduce some of the volatility but you still want to have the equities to produce the growth 60s you're probably going to be more 50 50 fixed income to, to equities now i will say Rodney, when I began in the business back in the 80s, uh, most people weren't expected to live much beyond 65. So the theory then was when you got into your 60s, you were going to move all your money to fixed income. Uh, but as we know now, uh, at 65, you still got a high probability you probably live another 20 years or so. So with inflation and taxes are considered, you're going to still need to have those equities built into the portfolio, which is why I say when you get into your 60s, a 50-50 mix between fixed income and equities. Now, for fixed income, just for those who aren't familiar with that term, uh, that just means bonds and uh, bonds or, or things that are going to pay you an income stream as opposed to be focused mostly on growth. Equities are mostly growth oriented, which is you're going to get less income from them, but you're going to get more growth. One of the things um, with equity that has changed in financial planning over time is, is um, there used to be with this rule where, where you actually push people toward more towards bonds. So there would have been 60s so, of um, the formula would, would have said that they would have been with um, a very heavy um, into bonds and, and move away from stocks. Now, again, you mentioned longevity and um, and people are living longer and, and, and that philosophy changed. Um, but now equities ought to be a part of your portfolio pretty much at any age at any age. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'll give you a couple of examples of uh, 
I know in the late 80s, early 90s, to your point, uh, the, the, the prevailing theory then was when you retire, just move all your money to bonds. Right. Uh, and that was because most people didn't expect to live more than five or seven years beyond retirement. And you were looking to generate a higher income. You weren't concerned about growth. But in today's world, most people are living much longer. Uh, and of course, we're seeing people into their 80s and 90s and some some people into their 100s. But the reasoning behind not going all fixed income or bonds is, is that uh, as time goes by, the income that you're generating from the bonds is it keeping pace with inflation. And you're now putting yourself in a position where you're on a fixed income almost. Uh, and you're also having to spend principal because the income from the bonds is not enough to keep pace with your expenses. So you're now depleting your resources at a much faster rate than you would have anticipated. Okay. Now, at what point are are there is there a point in your life when you should be invested one hundred percent in equities? Oh yeah, definitely. If you're in your twenties and thirties, and assuming you're investing for retirement, uh, and you assume you're going to work another thirty five years or thirty years, then all equities makes the most sense because you don't need a buffer. You just want uh, as much growth as you can possibly get. And so in your 20s and 30s, it, it's, it says statistically and historically, the data uh, proves that the higher your equity concentration, the higher probability is that you're going to have a, a much larger pot of money when you need it. So I would say in your 20s, there's no need to have any bonds, maybe a little bit of cash just for uh, opportunity buying. But uh, bonds, particularly in today's environment where your, your rate is somewhere in the 2%, 3% range, it, it's a drag on a young person's portfolio. Okay. Now let's move, let's move on to um, another topic. Um, and let's, let's move on to, let's talk about, um, we know we're not saving enough. <laughs> we, uh, every number, every survey says, people aren't saving enough. And I know people probably come into your office and say, I'm ready to retire. And you look at their portfolio and say, oh, no, you're not, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, 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 well, tell us actually something, uh, you know, is, does that happen to you? And, and what do you tell them? What, what can you tell somebody when they haven't saved enough for retirement, yet they think they're, they're ready to retire? Well, it, we, we have two, two barometers that we have people sort of taken in a little analysis. We said, hey, look, uh, some people are mentally ready, but not financially ready. And some people are financially ready, but not mentally ready. And so our little, uh, 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 I guess, test, so to speak, sort of allows us to determine where you are on the barometer. To your point is, there are a lot of people that are mentally ready to retire, but financially, they're not there. Uh, and that really gets down to, uh, do you, are your resources sufficient to cover your expenses? Particularly, we start with your core expenses. So that is, you know, housing, food, uh, transportation, health care. Uh, those are the key things that you'd like to make sure are covered. So depending on what you've put away, you may end up having to either reduce your standard of living during retirement, delay your retirement, or take more risk with your portfolio in order to cover the gap, for lack of a better term. So we tell them, hey, let's start with what you need and then figure out what you want. Now, are the resources you have significant to make your, meet your need? To your point, there's so many people who begin late preparing for retirement because, of course, when you're in your 20s and 30s, you know, retirement seems so far away, it's, you know, not something you should pay attention to. And then you start having kids, and then you got college education, and all these other things that demand your resources. And then we're, what we're seeing today is the third leg of that is, is parents, you know, maybe you have to care for your parents or spend some money to take care of them. So we say, after you've taken this test, if you're mentally ready, but you're not financially ready, 
let's look at what the alternatives are. Can we do some things differently with your portfolio that may allow those dollars to last a little longer? Should you delay retirement, maybe another three or four years? Uh, maybe you can live on less. Uh, and once we do the analysis, they'll be able to make their own decision of, should I, and sometimes it's a combination of all three, uh, which is I have to delay, I will live on less, and I've got to make my, my dollars work a little harder for me now. Great. Now, now um, what is there, is there something that you would like to, some of any advice you wanna give? Um, um, to 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 uh, for for the uh, viewers of these uh, videos on our website, any any particular area you want to cover? Well, uh, as you know, we we provide comprehensive planning, and I, I would just say to people that uh, it is important, almost as important as the spark plugs, carburetor, starter in your car, all working in conjunction with one another. Having a comprehensive strategy means <clears throat> not just having an investment plan, but actually understanding what retirement is going to look like for you. Uh, and that's different for everyone. So we have to incorporate uh, not only where's our income going to come from, uh, but also what kind of expenses do we have? What kind of taxes? So tax planning needs to be a part of this. Where will the money come from? What dollars do we spend first and last? Uh, and also, if we can, is there a possibility for a legacy for the next two or three generations? Now, as you and I've talked on many occasions, Rodney, uh, we know that there is uh, a wealth gap in this country that is substantial. Uh, and that's due to a lot of factors. Uh, but I think here and now we have a chance to change that direction or at least impact it. So I would say to uh, much of your audience that if you haven't begun thinking about the next two generations, uh, now is a good time to seek out that kind of advice because uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure you're okay. And if you're okay, can uh, your resources su support you during retirement? And then if you're okay, is the family okay? And the family means obviously your parents, your children, and potentially your grandchildren. And if we're going to have an impact on the grandchildren, I think we have to get started today. Because if I ask, like I ask most of my clients, hey, do you think uh, education is going to get better or worse? Do you think crime is going to get better or worse? job opportunities, better or worse, uh, uh, housing opportunities, better or worse. And if you believe that all of those will get worse than they are today, then the only thing that's gonna separate your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren from those inevitabilities is gonna be capital. And you have the opportunity today to make that difference. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your time today. Um, um, we want to thank we want to thank Eric Bailey. As I said, Eric is founder and president of Bailey Wealth Advisors in downtown Silver Spring.